Hey guys, welcome back to AFK Journey. In today's video, we're talking stargazing and my personal strategy and why you might also want to save your stargazer cards. What are they called in this game? The stellar crystals and not be summoning here at the moment. And just in editing, we hit 15,000 subscribers. So a massive thank you to you guys for the support you're showing this channel. Um, we're going to do a $100 giveaway in this video. Just be subscribed, leave a comment. You'll go into the draw. I'll announce the winner about a week away in a community post. I just this morning announced the winner for the 5k giveaway the 10k one is ongoing and then obviously we have this one and we will be running another one if we can manage to get to 20,000 subscribers but once again guys massive thank you for the support on the channel now i want to go through my reasoning i'm also going to talk about the characters that we have up for offer in case you are going to stargaze this is more targeted at free to play players if you're a whale a lot of the time if you can get characters to mythic plus or in extreme cases supreme plus then obviously getting them now is going to be beneficial but that depends on spending and stuff like that i'm looking more at free to play and low spending players uh, with this idea here. So let's get into it. So the first thing is I want to quickly go how we get these because I want to like emphasize how scarce these are and how long it's going to take us to be able to like guarantee ourselves maybe a mythic plus character because it is going to take a long time because if we look at the resource acquisition for these at the moment in the game, we cannot use crystals to summon or diamonds to summon for these guys. So the way you're going to get these uh, is over here in this shop here on a monthly basis and this shop here on a monthly basis. Now I definitely p recommend picking up all of these ones every month and all of the discounted ones every month. Now depending, depending on your spending and uh, summoning levels, you may have excess points that you can then spend on these ones as well, but that depends on the situation. Most free to play players, I think you're gonna be tight to try and get these um, just because it is so expensive. As you can see, I could pick up two right now, but then next month I'm gonna be a lot tighter. Also, once you complete story, then your income of summons is gonna go down, meaning your income of these is gonna go down and I'd rather save and be guaranteed to buy out these ones every month but that is just something else now the other place we can go ahead and get these is over in the guild in the guild chest now i got one in my first week uh, my first month's guild chest but if you if you click on the hero recruitment resource at the end of each did i say month each week uh when you get your chest you have a chance at these i luckily got one but that is the other place where you're going to get those i do anticipate uh just based on the way afk arena operates and stuff like that eventually we will not we will we hopefully will get more events that will give us greater income on these in the future but we'll have to wait and see now as for the characters that we have also if you haven't unlocked stargazer yet once you do 400 cumulative summons on your account that is when you go ahead and unlock it now we also have the side of the guild store where you can pick up a copy now for most free-to-play players i recommend picking up a copy of rainier first because he has functionality at one copy and then he doesn't get better functionality until mythic plus i'll talk about all the other characters in a little bit but to, to save some time, I think Rainer is the one for free-to-play players, especially, and basically everyone to focus on first. But for Rainier, between one copy and then seven copies, which is the total you need, so you need one copy plus six dupes to get him to get these guys to Mythic Plus, between one copy and Mythic Plus, yes, you do get stat increases each time, but in general, it doesn't change his functionality. Once you get this guy to Mythic Plus, then he has just a flat damage increase that applies to bosses and he becomes one of the best debuffers in the game in boss fights and meta in every boss fight once you get him to Mythic Plus. However, the reason I am myself personally saving, now it's all RNG, so you can, you can roll the dice and see how you go, but I want to be able to guarantee myself a mythic plus character before I go ahead and start spending the Stargazer. Now, the reason is we know in gotcha games, power creep is always a thing. As they introduce more things, they're gonna make them more powerful to make people wanna spend. In AFK Arena, they do release just some trash characters. Like it is a thing, but eventually you will start seeing power creep. So I'd rather be saving my, dude, what are these things called? Stellar crystals saving them until I get to a point where I'm comfortable and I think I can get a character to Mythic Plus before I spend them because one, we might get a new Celestial Hypogean that is even more meta than Rainier in that time. And if I'm at like, say, three or four copies of Rainier, then I'm in that awkward position of, do I leave him at this in between level where he doesn't really have the added functionality and I've kind of wasted that investment 
and go to the next meta character or do I keep going on him because I've kind of invested and I don't want to get stuck in that pickle. Now, once again, that is RNG based. So when we take a look at it, uh, for instance, like I mentioned, if I needed six more copies, if I wanted to average it out at uh, 40 pulls per, co uh, per copy, like saying that I'm going to pity every time and you can make up your own numbers for this but say you were saying 40 I need six copies that's four times six which is our 24 which is 240 subbins so to get to guarantee pitying this guy because we can get the one copy from the shop you need 240 maybe you get a second one by from the shop in that time it's down to 200 however maybe you want to say okay I'm going to test my rates I reckon I'll get one copy every 30 pulls you can do that math, bring it down to 180. If you then get a second copy in the shop, bring it down to 150. And it just depends on your level that you're happy with. But I think just going ahead and popping singles as you get them um, isn't the wisest investment. Well, you can do it. Like I said, it's a game. You guys do what you do. It's RNG based. So you could get super lucky, get like three copies in your first 10 pull and be like, Vulcan, you're an idiot. Which yes, it could happen. But I like playing the odds more so. And that is why I am saving um, instead of just going all in with everything I have as I get it. Once again, it is completely up to you, but I just want to bring this to your attention as an option so you guys can choose whatever you want to do and you don't feel shafted when they release it sorry not when if they release a new overpowered celestial hypergene that then just power creeps and everyone wants that one and you're like three four deep into uh rainier going i don't know what to do now so that is my suggestion that is what i am personally doing i am going to save up personally and uh rely on the 30 pity so basically if i get to 180 summons saved and he is still the meta unit then i'll go if by that time i've got a second copy and once i'm at 150 then i will go for him and hopefully i get it if i get shafted on my rates well that is the risk i took so that is my thoughts there the other thing to consider with celestial hypergenes in the future is i don't know if they're going to add new ones to the store here i i really don't know currently they are all in the store but when we look to and i always like to get some inspiration from afk arena because same developer and stuff like that the first when afk arena first introduced celestials and hypergenes they only had athalia and aziz so it was only one of each they both went into a store but then it wasn't every other one that went into the store so it was rare to see them in the store so i don't think they can put everyone in the store but they might and that would be great as well and then maybe for me once i get my one copy of rainier i'm also gonna save my guild coins in case that happens and they add other characters to the store that way like i said the second copy of rainier isn't really going to change the world for me but if i can save it and they add other characters into the store there's two situations in which that is good one if the character has use at one copy like Rainier does. Now I'll talk about the characters in a second, why he has one copy usage and stuff like that. But I just want to get this message across. Um, basically, if, if a new character does go into that store, then I can get the one copy and have functionality straight away out of them. Or two, if they are better than Rainier, let's say, at Mythic Plus, well, then there's an extra copy I can get. But once again, I don't know if they will be added to the store, but because anything more than one copy before I get to Mythic Plus on Rainier doesn't really stress me, I'm just going to save my guild coins once I get my first copy, which should be in less than a day. <laughs> so that is that one. Uh, and like I said, when you look at the stores as well, like we can see from the Rainier store, they don't have every character, but the Dream Realm does have every elite character. So I'm really unsure on what that's going to do. So once again, you guys can make your decision. That is just my thoughts around it. As for the characters themselves, I'm not going to go too deep into them all because like I said, I think Rainier is the one that really works well. He has a transposition ability where he's going to swap an ally's position with an enemy's position and that ally, and then the, the enemy is going to, well, not once you get Mythic Plus, but basically the ally ally gets healed based on the damage taken by the enemy which is a fantastic effect and you get all of that at one copy so this can be useful in pvp it can also be useful in campaign and afk stages so that's why he has the one copy viability then when you get into mythic plus like i mentioned he gets this effect that the enemy he swaps with which also works on bosses gets a damage taken increase by 25 percent until the end of battle so it's a 100 percent uptime for the entire battle on the enemy on top of that you've got an ally that is getting healed uh, so you've got extra protection in that. So like once he gets the Mythic Plus, he is a very, very, very meta 
in bosses and bosses are where you get some really good resources so trying to get high scores there is good but like i mentioned even at one copy he's still useful in arena and useful in campaign so he's just an all-round useful unit like i said one copy he gets that first functionality and then at mythic plus he gets the bossing functionality where he is a super meta super meta unit now the other three um i'm not overly versed with these guys i haven't tested them myself i had a good chat with uh season from analytica i'll leave a link to the website uh, in the description where i think they have the the rank one guild on server number one um and they've got a lot of whales testing these things uh and essentially what his summary was to me these two both useful in pvp she's also useful uh in a couple fights uh in um in the, I keep trying to say Cursed Realm because of AFK Arena, in the Dream Realm. Uh, and then he's more of a PvP annoying unit who can revive. These guys are just both big damage. She has a thing that can basically ignore revives, which is fantastic. And then he's just got all around big nuking damage with ignore defense stuff. So that was the, the rundown. But essentially, these are all whale units because you need investment. You need like, you need stats to make them work. Whereas Rainier gets his swapping functionality at one copy, which is... A great functionality to have and then once again he gets his boss usefulness at more so if you pay to win um kind of i i think rainy is still the first one then you kind of look to scarlita and dianelle and then burial is mainly just for arena uh well he is mainly two but these guys do have decent just all-round damage but at the end of the day this is the guy most people want to focus on and like i said whales are still testing these three out to find out exact functionality but it's just a no-brainer that one copy of rainier gets you good functionality uh and then max do i mean sorry mythic plus gets you amazing amazing boss debuffing which is going to have a massive effect on your scores uh which hopefully can get you up the ranks which hopefully can get you more rewards each week i mean sorry each day in the bossing uh which would be fantastic so that is my general thoughts around the stargazer saving spending stuff like that once again you don't have to listen to me this is just my opinion uh and what i am going to do myself is save up but if you get that itchy trigger finger i know the I got an itchy trigger figure yesterday on this account and I popped some normal summons. I actually got lucky. I got back to back epics uh, and then I did three singles of epic calls and I got two epics out of it. So I, uh, I kind of cheese my luck. Not gonna lie. That's how we got uh, just, just, just a bit of, bit of brag type. <laughs> I got the Eron to Mythic now. Uh, I got the Thorin to Mythic and she is available to get into Mythic. So in those few summons I did, I got two copies of her. I got one copy of Thorin and I got one th copy of Iron, and then I exchanged the chest from the weekly login. So I need two more copies of Iron, and then I don't even have to worry about not having a Smokey. <laughs> so that is it, guys. Once again, don't forget to be subscribed and leave a comment to go in the draw for the giveaway. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.